appreciate it. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for coming. So um, the introduction was awesome. I won't spend a lot of time on myself. There's a few fun facts up there. Uh, my Twitter handle is Michael Reynolds if you want to follow me there. And uh, our website is spinweb.net. Uh, we do a lot of complex uh, website projects, a lot of enterprise corporate website projects and digital marketing engagements. And we kind of specialize in conservative industries uh, like financial and healthcare and things like that. So it's a little bit about what we do at SpinWeb. What we do also is social media advertising. A lot of our engagements include social media advertising as part of uh, kind of the overall program. And so today we're gonna focus on that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited about this stuff. I'm glad you're here. Uh, this stuff really works really well. And I'm really excited to kind of share it with you. So we'll kind of start off with just some basic stuff. Uh, I'm assuming that everyone in this room is kind of in agreement that social media is important, that social media is something we should care about, that social media influences purchase behavior, the data proves that. So just to make sure we're on the same page, uh, we do have data showing obviously that tons of people are on social media. It does influence their behavior. And we heard a lot of great stuff from Gary Vee last night on this same topic as well that social media is something that if we're not getting really good at and we're not becoming experts at and owning that space, we're going to be at a disadvantage. So we're gonna talk a lot about how to do some of that stuff today. So let's talk a little bit about just kind of some of the, the myths, the, the uh, failure points, some of the stuff that frustrates a lot of us about social media. Uh, we've been told a lot of stuff that kind of worked in the past, uh, sort of, that is not working anymore, right? We've been told, that we should follow our editorial calendar, post a few times a week, uh, post as often as possible, get content out there, right? We've probably heard a lot of that stuff. Uh, we've been told post images, that's better for engagement, right? We've been told to start conversations, ask questions. Uh, social media is free, right? We've been told that social media is something we shouldn't need to spend money on because we can post stuff and organically get shared and things go viral and all sorts of magical things happen and rainbows and kittens, but um, none of that's really working as much anymore. What's happened to Facebook, right? So, for example, you post something on Facebook, it used to be you could reach 90% of your followers and now it's more like 5%, right? It's pretty much dismal. Some of us are posting, or I'm sorry, boosting posts for more reach. Some of us are kind of dipping our toe a little bit into that. We're, we're boosting posts, uh, we're kind of getting some of our content out there a little bit better, but we're still seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of issues with sales. Is this stuff actually driving sales? Is this stuff actually making money for us? All this stuff we've been told about posting on a regular basis, posting images, starting conversations, boosting stuff here and there, are we making money from it? A lot of the time, the conversations I have end in the answer being no, we're not making money from it. You know, we talk to clients that are struggling to understand why their social media program is failing because they're not investing properly in it. So we're gonna talk about how to invest properly in that and how to really drive sales and make it happen. So a lot of the failure points come from a lack of integration with your website and CRM. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, some of the failure happens because they treat social media like this little bubble over here, this kind of a place to hang out and do this stuff. And the real work and the real sales happen over here, but there's no integration between the two. So we're gonna talk about how to integrate that. And by the way, integration is not putting a LinkedIn icon on your website so people can click over to your LinkedIn page. That's not integration. Integration is some of the detailed stuff we're gonna talk about today. There's a lack of strategy and seeing the big picture behind it. People look for the quick wins too much. They look for instant gratification, making sales right away. They're not looking at it uh, with a long game approach. And again, they're being told it's free. And the main reason that social media is failing right now is people just are simply not investing. They're not putting real dollars into it. So many times I talk to organizations who are interested in getting better at social media, but they're not spending any money on it. They expect to magically somehow create the perfect viral video or the perfect post or the perfect content that gets shared everywhere. And they get frustrated when they have 100 likes on Facebook and three LinkedIn followers and they share one thing and it gets one comment and 10 views. And they get really frustrated and they don't understand why social media is not working for them. It's because they're not spending money on it. So we are all, I shouldn't say all, a lot of us are underspending on social media. We as a, as a general business climate are underspending on social media. So take entertainment. In entertainment, the television advertising industry knows how this works. There is a one to five ratio of spending on distribution and marketing versus the actual creation of the content. So 
when a TV show is created, there is five times more money invested in actually getting it in front of the right people and getting it out there and getting it marketed and making it successful than actually spending on creating the content for the show itself. So if the entertainment industry knows this, why don't we? Why are we underspending? They know already what it takes to make content successful. They know what it takes to get that new Netflix series in front of people so people watch it and start talking about it. They know what it takes to get that new show in front of people so it becomes successful. So they know this, but somehow we're not doing this. We are not spending enough on social media. We're not spending any sometimes on social media. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about how to spend wisely and how to make this a real focused strategy for business. Uh, we're going to center it around business. We're going to talk about targeting the right people, tying campaigns to your marketing campaigns, uh, so social campaigns to your marketing campaigns, truly integrating it with your website correctly, and then tracking leads and acquisition costs and get some real data that's good for bosses and boardrooms and reports and all the stuff that people need with their inbound marketing strategy. So again, we know the inbound marketing process. Nothing major here. We all know this probably. We want to find new people to talk to, right? We want to find new people. We want to convert them to leads. We want to get their information in our database. We want to close them. We want to make sales and retain and make them happy, right? Pretty straightforward. So how are we going to integrate social media with this whole process? So before we dig into some of the specific tactics, we're going to get pretty tactical on some of this stuff, but I want to make sure we understand how to approach social media advertising. A lot of times when people start out with this stuff, this stuff is pretty powerful. They have these new superpowers where they can reach the right people and do all this magical stuff on social media, and the first thing they do is try and sell right away because they think it's Google. So again, Gary Vee last night was awesome talking about AdWords, building his business on AdWords, and then talking about Facebook. And a lot of people treat paid social like AdWords. They say, well, people on AdWords search for stuff to buy, and I can get in front of them with money, and they can buy things, right? So that, is, that works on Google because people searching on Google have buying intent. They're looking to actually buy something or at least do something specific that is sales oriented typically. On social media, that's not the case. They're not there to buy stuff. They're there to hang out. On LinkedIn, they're there to go network. On Facebook, they're watching cat videos. On Twitter, they're following sports. They're not buying stuff. They're out there just hanging out. So we have to understand that social media as an environment is not search, and we have to stop treating it like that. We have to stop thinking of it as a quick transaction space and look at that long game instead. So we're going to talk about uh, general concepts and tactics that apply universally. And I'm going to focus most attention on Facebook. We're going to talk a little bit uh, on LinkedIn. And we're going to spend a lot of time on Facebook and probably 30 seconds on Twitter. I'll warn you in advance, probably not a whole lot of time on Twitter. Um, simply because for the work we do and most of our clients and most companies I talk to, LinkedIn and Facebook are the two big platforms that are going to make the most impact for them. If you're in entertainment or politics or sports, Twitter can work really well for you. That's just not a space that we're in, and so we don't see a lot of traction there. So for most businesses that we talk to, the, the best bet for them is going to be LinkedIn and Facebook. But again, the principles apply universally, no matter what social network you are going to play in. So let's talk about goals. Uh, I want you to leave today with the mindset of learning how to amplify content rapidly, getting content in front of people very rapidly, uh, activating subscriptions to your brand through social uh, with a very little friction. We're going to build sales funnels on social, track the conversions, measure your ROI, and then sell things, right? That's, that's the goal, right, to sell things. So we're going to work on that. So I'm going to start a little bit with LinkedIn, just kind of building some basic concepts and then dig into some of the fun stuff with Facebook. So LinkedIn is fairly mature. LinkedIn is a great place to match your buyer personas up with your content. So both in LinkedIn and in Facebook, uh, we want to focus typically on the newsfeed. There's a couple options you have for these platforms, and I always focus on the newsfeed. I, I really don't do the sidebar ads. Both on Facebook and LinkedIn, no one cares about them. They don't click. So we want to put content in the newsfeed in LinkedIn and Facebook. So when you go to your ad manager, that's where you want to really choose your campaign. So LinkedIn is really good for sponsoring content. Here's an example from AIG. So AIG is publishing a healthcare reform FAQ. It's a white paper or a guide or whatever you want to call it. And all they're doing is simply getting it out there in front of people. So LinkedIn is awesome when it comes to matching your buyer personas to your content. So a lot of times we write content, we write a blog post, an article, a guide, an ebook, a download. And we have our buyer personas over here, and we have the content over here, and we struggle to match it up. We get the guide in front of some people, but it's not reaching the right people. We know who our personas are, but they aren't really seeing our content. 
LinkedIn is really great for getting content, just raw content in front of the right people because the demographic targeting is so uh, precise, especially for B2B. So for AIG, um, they might want to get this in front of insurance professionals, for example. So in LinkedIn, the demographic targeting is really, really precise, really powerful. In this example, you can target people in the financial industry down to insurance, uh, specific geographies. And all we're really doing at this point is getting raw traffic to the offer, to the website, to the offer landing page, whatever it is. We're going to talk about using the traffic later, but really, I want you to stop just right there and think, okay, if all I'm going to do is just get some top of the funnel content in front of people. That is, that is winning because I'm matching my buyer persona up with the content itself. So LinkedIn has a ton of categories. You can do industry, you can do size of company, you can do seniority by job title, you can do seniority by um, role in the company, uh, what groups they're in. So if you have a whole LinkedIn group of people that have a common interest that you target, you can target people from that group. So LinkedIn is super targeted when matching your buyer personas up. I typically save these audiences when I create them on LinkedIn because I want to reuse them later. So this is an example of one of our target markets, which is marketing directors. We did a lot of work with marketing directors in certain types of companies. And so it's very logical that we would want to save an audience made up of people with a job title marketing director in certain size company in the US, let's say, or global or whatever we want to do, and save that audience. So whenever we create a new campaign, we publish an article, we get an offer in front of people, we drop the audience in, match it up, and we're good to go. So you're taking your buyer personas and you're just basically attaching them to your LinkedIn campaigns and just saying, get that content in front of these people all day long. It's very powerful. This is also newish as of this year, I think a few months ago actually. Uh, LinkedIn now does conversion tracking, and we're going to get deeper into conversion tracking in a few minutes in Facebook, but conceptually, uh, LinkedIn does a really good job of conversion tracking as well. Again, it's new. If you use HubSpot, you can already do this in HubSpot, but if you're not using HubSpot or you want to have a secondary source, LinkedIn now has conversion tracking built in the system, which is nice. So to do that, if someone downloads an offer, for example, registers for a webinar, you can track every single lead that came in from that offer based on that campaign. So you can see how, many, uh, how much you're spending per lead, for example, on webinar registrations or downloads, and it's pretty nice. So in this example, uh, this is an engineering firm we work with, so they run a lot of webinars, and they've told us that webinar leads are really, really valuable for them. Uh, they do five-figure projects. Uh, when someone signs up for one of their highly technical webinars, it's really, really high quality because that person is very interested in that particular topic, and it typically leads to sales down the road. So we put a value on each lead. LinkedIn lets us put a value in there and say, hey, each lead is worth, let's say, $25,000 or something like that. And you do that by putting a tracking code on your website. Uh, pretty straightforward. LinkedIn gives you tracking code, stick it in the footer of your website, and from that point on, you can start to track every conversion that happens based on a campaign. So it's pretty nice. So if you're not doing conversion tracking, it's very useful when seeing kind of some basic ROI in what you're doing. And again, when you're setting up a campaign at that point, you'll be able to track that conversion and, and tie it to the campaign. So let's say, again, you launch a webinar campaign. Get in front of your personas, pull in that particular conversion, and then every time someone registers for the webinar based on seeing the campaign, registers as a conversion. You can track all that, which is nice. So LinkedIn, and, you know, we're going to spend, again, most time on Facebook because these principles apply universally, and Facebook is the most mature. But I use LinkedIn a lot for just raw traffic and raw leads. Um, it doesn't have uh, retargeting yet or really fancy custom audiences, things like that, but it's really, really good for two things. One is mainly generating raw traffic but also good for, for lead generation, but it's really good for top of the funnel stuff. And I'm not going to worry so much about what happens after that because a lot of the heavy lifting happens later in Facebook after that. So that's what the asterisk next to that drive traffic is. I'm going to use that traffic later. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the rest. I'm just going to say, you know what, I want to make sure the right people are coming to my website. A lot of us get website traffic, but we don't know if it's the right people. It's, it's random people that may or may not be our target audience. So if you want to build quickly, really qualified traffic to your website of the right personas, LinkedIn is awesome for that. So let's get into Facebook. Facebook is my favorite advertising platform, my favorite social network because of that. And again, Gary Vee touched on this very well last night when he talked about you need to get really, really good at Facebook. So we're going to talk about the business manager briefly to get kind of set up in that, handling some of the amplification, uh, and just really digging into some of the detailed stuff you can do. So. The first thing you want to make sure you're doing on Facebook is use the business manager. A lot of times we talk to organizations that are using 
Uh, they're not using the business manager on Facebook, and it's kind of awkward for them because they have people in their company and maybe interns or marketing consultants, and they are tying those people's personal Facebook profiles to their business page as an admin, and all that stuff happens through that connection. And it's kind of awkward because they're really using their personal account to log in and get stuff, and there's sometimes that lack of separation. So the business manager is nice because it separates all that out. So if you go to business.facebook.com, It'll guide you through the process. It's very simple. And you can then take your work email account, tie that to your business manager account. It separates your personal profile from your business stuff. And you can add and remove people from your business manager very easily. And it's all completely separate from personal profiles. A lot of people really like that. So it's very useful to kind of keep all that separate. So I do recommend all this stuff you've got to be the business manager for. So again, that's at business.facebook.com. Just go there, set things up. It takes about five minutes and you'll pull in your, your page, claim your ad account, and you're all good to go. And again, your ads are gonna look fairly similar. Uh, the colors change a little bit, but you're gonna have all your ads in one place. You've got a hamburger menu where you get to all the stuff that we're gonna talk about. So the menu up there on the top is where you kinda get to all the stuff we're gonna talk about. So, sponsoring content on LinkedIn, or on Facebook, similar to LinkedIn. Again, we wanna target the newsfeed. We don't wanna really target the, the sidebar ads. I've never seen that work well. I've never seen the audience network uh, work very well for our clients anyway. Um, we sometimes do turn on Instagram, if it makes sense, but most of the time we spend most of our dollars on the newsfeed in both desktop and mobile. Pretty straightforward, all the action is there. And so a couple examples of posts that we've done that worked really well is on the left-hand side, you've got one of our podcast episodes. It's a good example of kind of how to structure things. Facebook likes a big, bold, beautiful image with very little or no text on it. The more text you have on your image, the lower your reach is gonna be. They now allow more than 20% text on an image, but it will damage your reach. So they will let you do it, but they'll penalize you for it. So there's no sense in doing it. Just make sure your image is clear, no text on it, bold and beautiful. Um, put compelling copy on the top and the bottom, good headline, and good to go. So on the left-hand side, this is an example of simply amplifying content. So whether it's a podcast episode or a blog post, an article, a video, whatever it might be, a great example of just getting the content in front of the right people, structuring a campaign to just get that in someone's newsfeed. Pretty straightforward. On the right-hand side, we've got an offer that is a gated offer. They come to our website, come to our landing page, download a website audit kit. Um, again, a sample or an example of a, an offer to generate a lead. So the demographics on Facebook are also pretty powerful. A lot like LinkedIn, there's some differences. Uh, it is a little more tuned for B2C. So you can do things like, if you're in B2C, for example, you can target people by net income, I'm sorry, uh, net worth, household income. Uh, you can target people that make a certain amount of money or people that are technology early adopters, people that have just bought a house, people that are likely to buy a car in the next six months, all sorts of interesting consumer behaviors. It is super powerful, all sorts of data. Facebook's been gathering all this data on us for years and we've happily forked it over and now they've turned around and resold it to us so as marketers, we can take advantage of that, right? So there's some really powerful stuff in there. So for B2B, it is also really powerful. A lot of the, the pushback I get sometimes when I first talk about Facebook for B2B is, well, Facebook's only for consumer. So you know, we work with, again, a lot of, let's say an engineering firm or a lot of B2B companies. They are eager to start spending money on LinkedIn sometimes because they think LinkedIn is all business. But when we talk about Facebook, they're like, ah, Facebook's not for us. It's all just consumer driven. That is completely false. We have had some of the best results ever in B2B from Facebook. If I have to pick one network for B2C or B2C to, to bet on, it's Facebook. So we really see great impact uh, in a B2B space on Facebook. So you can do things like target job titles. Um, and again, people don't think about this. I think, again, Gary Vee touched on it again. We, we know the people we wanna talk to. It's not about the company, it's about the people. I think some people use the term B2H, business to human. You know, we're, we're not targeting some big, faceless brand, we're targeting the people in the brands, right? And they're on Facebook. They're not really hanging out on LinkedIn as much, they're hanging out on Facebook, watching cat videos. So, we want to target the people. We want to target their job titles, uh, the company where they work, maybe the industry they're in, maybe what they like, what their uh, skill sets are. Um, all sorts of interesting B2B and work-based and professional demographics we can find on Facebook and target them really well. So do not overlook Facebook for B2B. It is awesome for B2B. I can talk all day just about B2B for Facebook. So we can also save audiences on Facebook just like LinkedIn. I do this all the time. So when you, save, when you create an audience on Facebook, go ahead and save it uh, and then reuse it later. So again, this is an example of one of our target, whoops, sorry about that, one of our target markets, which is marketing directors. Uh, pretty cut and dry. Marketing directors at certain industries, certain size companies, 
Um, we've plugged in a whole list of potential variations on the title of marketing director by geography. And I can just reuse the audience over and over. I can then run a campaign. I can take a blog post or a, a podcast episode or an offer. I can get that offer in front of all the marketing directors based on my buyer persona. And it's very, very efficient. I'm not wasting impressions on people that aren't targeted. I know exactly who my target is. Again, just like we heard before, you can target on specific companies, too. So it's really, really detailed. So this is an example of we actually have a service that uh, works with um, HubSpot partner agencies. So we actually went to HubSpot's website, found the titles or, or the company names of all the agency partners we could find, plugged them into Facebook, and we got a whole audience of agency partners in there that we're targeting. Maybe some of you guys are up on that list. So that lets us very specifically fine-tune specific companies. So if you have you know, a handful of companies in your area that you really, really want to work with, you know, take that company and target everyone, every employee in that company, send your content to every employee in that company, and you've got a very powerful way to get content in front of exactly the company you want. The message can be tuned to that company, and it's very, very direct, very specific. So that stuff is all fairly straightforward. We can do demographic targeting on LinkedIn, demographic targeting on Facebook, matching your buyer personas up with your content. That's a good thing, right? So for some of us, that's already pushing us further ahead. Some of us may be doing it already, so let's go a step further. Let's talk about custom audiences. So custom audiences are a way to build an audience of people to target based on stuff you already know about them. It could be uh, email addresses you have, which a lot of people do, or it could be behavior based on where they go on your website. So custom audience, these are some examples of audiences we build, and, and the way you build these is uh, you, you go to your audiences tab and you get an option for things like upload your customer list or website traffic. The customer list I won't talk about a whole lot because it's fairly straightforward and a lot of people know about it already. You basically take your email database, upload to Facebook. Facebook then matches up the email addresses to Facebook accounts and it matches to about a 60% accuracy level, so it's pretty good. And suddenly you have a whole audience of people that you can run ads directly to uh, based on the email addresses. So it can be useful if you want to reinforce stuff based on contacts you already have in your HubSpot database, for example. My favorite, though, is website custom audiences because these are so frictionless. People don't do anything. All they have to do is land on your website, and you've got them. When they land on your website, you can do all sorts of stuff with them because they've simply hit your site, and you know where they've gone, and you know what they're looking at, and it's really, really useful. So just like LinkedIn, when you set up custom audiences, it's going to make you grab a chunk of code, stick it on your website template. It's super easy. Once you've done that, it'll start triggering every visit and report that back to Facebook. So whether they're logged in or not, as soon as someone hits your website, it's going to report that back to Facebook. It's going to start gathering data on them that you can reuse later. So some ways you might use that data are, one real simple way is simply build an audience of all your website traffic. So if you want to take all of the people that visit your website traffic in a certain time period and send them something specific because they've been there before, you can do that. The maximum you can do right now on Facebook is six months, which is 180 days. You can do shorter time spans, but I can go back and target anyone who visits my website within the last six months. Some people do 30 days, some people do three months. Depending on what your strategy is, that's going to depend. But this can be useful because is it easier to get someone to take an action if they've never heard of you or if they've seen your logo and been to your website before? Probably if they've been to your website and seen you before because there's at least some element of trust there that that's not there to a stranger, right? So that's useful. Going deeper, we can segment that based on what people do on your website. So what I like to do a lot is, after I build this audience of website traffic, I want to segment based on interest. So in our case, let's say we want to segment people that are interested in search engine optimization, SEO. So you can have an option to say, OK, I want to target everyone who visits a URL containing this keyword. So for you, it might be whatever keyword that you want to target. I'm just picking SEO. So anyone that lands on an article about SEO or a page on our site about SEO or anything on our site about SEO, they're going to be dropped into this audience. So later, I can go back and I can target very specific content and very specific offers about SEO to those people because I know they're already interested in that. So I'm being very efficient. I'm not wasting money. I'm not wasting impressions on people that don't care about the stuff. I'm saying. I'm going to take a subset of people that care about SEO because I know they went to that stuff on my website, and I'm going to tailor information just to them, and that's going to increase my conversion rate a lot. And it's going to lower my spend a lot. I'm not going to waste money on people that don't care. I'm going to spend it directly on people that do care. I can also base it on people that have not seen a specific page. So for example, if I want to promote an offer to a group, 
but I don't want to waste money on people that have already seen it before, I can say, show me everyone who comes to my website but has not seen my particular offer. And as soon as they see the offer, it drops them out of the audience, and I stop wasting impressions on them and redirect it to others that have not seen it before. So again, this is a way to really make sure you're not wasting your money, you're being very efficient. I love the whole form abandonment or shopping cart abandonment uh, feature as well, because you can target people that have come to your contact form, or um, landed on the checkout page on a shopping cart, or a registration form but didn't complete it. So if you have people landing on these pages or forms and not completing them, you can drop those people into an audience based on the fact that they went to the page but never viewed the thank you page, and they're suddenly in a group of people that never quite finished that process, and you can retarget them and say, hey, what happened? Why didn't, I, why didn't you finish that process? Let, let's go back and, and try and finish it. I also like targeting people based on time spent on your website. So you can target people uh, based on the most active people that are on your website. So if you have people that uh, come to your blog a lot, maybe you read your blog very often, they're, they're regular readers, they're regular visitors, they're kind of fans of your company, they come by a lot, they're probably more likely to do something than people who show up once and never come back, right? The people that show up once and never come back, they're still going to be in that website audience, but they're not going to be in the audience, for example, of top 25 website visitors because the people that spend the most time are going to end up here in this audience. And they're, the, again, the people that are going to have the higher conversion rate, and we're going to redirect and be very efficient with our spending based on these people. So let's say you don't get a lot of website traffic. All this sounds fine and good, but let's say you don't get a lot of traffic yet. Maybe you're a startup, or maybe you're just getting into marketing, maybe you haven't done a lot in the past, and you don't get a lot of website traffic, and so you're not really able to do much with this. Lookalike audiences are pretty powerful because they let you take your website visitors or segments and then expand that on Facebook and say, show me more people just like those people. So Facebook will let you create, like magically create new audiences of people based on the traffic you already have. So if you need more traffic and more people uh, based on what you already have, if it's a small number, you can expand that using lookalike audiences. So I like that. So Facebook conversion tracking is also uh, very mature. Uh, LinkedIn is newer, but Facebook's been doing it for a long time. I really like this. So custom conversions let you build conversions based on certain events. So if someone downloads a, an ebook, someone registers for a webinar, you can track that and track that as a conversion based on a campaign. So again, if I have someone completing a registration for a webinar, um, I can then see that. In this case, it's an offer download. So I've got you know, a few hundred downloads of this offer. I'm spending about $5.53 per lead. This is really nice because what you can do is you can run a campaign, tie it to a custom conversion based on the fact that they viewed a thank you page, and then I can see exactly how much I'm spending per lead. So you know, if, if you're like us and we do you know, five and six figure projects, $5 a lead is very, very reasonable. So if you're selling lower cost products with maybe higher volume, you're gonna wanna tweak this differently, but a lot of the time if you're working in an industry where you know, the cost or the, the fee for your services is high or, or you've got a product that's fairly expensive. I mean, you can spend a few dollars per lead and get some really, really good impact uh, because you're generating qualified leads because you know your personas, you're tracking the conversions, and you've got really good reporting to show the rest of your team or your boss or your board or whatever. This stuff is not costing you a lot and you're getting really good leads through it. So I love the conversion tracking. Okay, so if you do nothing else and you do like one thing, out of all this, do Facebook lead ads. I love Facebook lead ads, they are phenomenal. So the typical model in Facebook is you're going to run a campaign, uh, maybe it's an offer, maybe it's a webinar registration, someone's gonna click on the, the sign up button or the download button, they're gonna come over to your website, come to your landing page, maybe on HubSpot, they're gonna fill out the form, put their email address, put some other information in, click the submit button, get a thank you page, and they've got the download. That's the process typically, and that works fine, there's nothing wrong with that, but there's all sorts of chances for that person to give up along the way, right? So they click the button, they come over to the website. Oh, maybe I don't want to fill out the form. Okay, I'm done. Maybe I want to put in a couple things, but it, you know, the email address or the phone number is required, and now I'm done. I give up. Or maybe they get distracted. And maybe they're on mobile where no one wants to type anything on mobile anyway, right? So they're going to give up really quickly. So Facebook lead ad is the answer to that, and it's really powerful in that it keeps them within the Facebook environment, and it lets them take the action or make the download of the registration without typing anything at all. So you run a lead ad and you run a campaign in the newsfeed just like everything else and when you click the download of the register button, 
a modal pops up, a pop-up window appears, and it pre-fills the information they already have in Facebook. So Facebook knows their first name, knows their last name, knows their email address, sometimes knows their phone number, sometimes knows their company, job title, stuff like that. And it's gonna pre-fill as much as possible, sometimes all of it. So all the user has to do is click twice to confirm, you know, once to sign up and one to confirm. And without typing anything at all, they've suddenly completed the action. They've completed the download, they've registered for the webinar, they've completed that action, and it's so little friction, the conversion rate is phenomenal. If you wanna really like, massively improve your conversion rates for offer downloads and registrations, this is the way to do it. Lead ads are phenomenal for this. So if you do like one thing, just like get some crazy high conversion rates by just doing this. So an example here is, uh, this is a, an association that we worked with and they do webinars. Uh, this particular one is retirement cash flow planning. Sounds riveting, right? Actually, we tripled, I think quadrupled their average uh, rate of registrations by using a lead ad. So again, this is the, the basic campaign. It's got the, the copy at the top, the nice big image there, uh, the sign up link, call to action there, all the normal stuff. Normally, it would click over to a landing page, but in this case, we did a lead ad, and all they had to do was just click once and then click again to confirm. It pre-filled everything. We linked it up to Zoom uh, webinars. You can do go to meeting as well or go to webinar. And they click the button, information goes into HubSpot and Zoom automatically through Zapier. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us are using Zapier. It lets you link up all the information together. So again, within a couple seconds and a couple clicks and no typing, we've got the registration in the system. They've got their confirmation email in their inbox. It's all done. And their conversion rate was phenomenal. And we, we dramatically improved their rate of uh, registrations for webinars. So that's phenomenal for them. I think one of the number one um, best use cases for lead ads is webinar registration. It's super powerful. So I love Facebook for B2B. I love it for getting content in front of people. Um, I typically am gonna test variations as well. Uh, you know, do A-B testing on the images, see what works best. Uh, I love it for getting traffic to my website based on the right people and the right personas. Um, I love it for growing my email database and my leads through downloads and registrations and webinars. And the remarketing platform is phenomenal. You can do so much stuff with it. As promised, I'm not gonna spend hardly any time on Twitter, uh, simply because, uh, and Gary, again, I keep talking about Gary Vee, but he also mentioned that the ad spend, the cost per you know, impression and, and click is very high on Twitter, it's kind of skewed. We don't use it really hardly at all, but you can do a lot of the similar things that you can on, on Facebook and LinkedIn. Ad Creative is fairly straightforward, just like the previous platforms. One thing that's nice, you can do geography and things like that, but you can also target uh, based on interesting behaviors like what TV shows they watch. So if you wanna do things like, if they watch Modern Family, for example, uh, there's some stuff like that in there. You can do things that, you know, are they homeowners? Are they business travelers? There's some interesting lifestyle stuff in Twitter, so if that applies to you and your industry, uh, it might be worth targeting. Uh, we don't really use Twitter, again, at all, really. We focus on LinkedIn and Facebook as the primary uh, networks for our audience, but Twitter does similar things. You can do uh, custom audiences based on website visitors, track conversions, things like that. So I just wanted you to mainly be aware that it exists, so you can apply those same principles if you want to, to Twitter. So, again, good for amplification, good for traffic, it's got both B2B and B2C, uh, pretty good persona targeting as well. So, again, conceptually, we wanna put all this stuff together, figure out who we're gonna target, how we're gonna reach them, how we're gonna nurture them, convert them, and then get them to buy stuff. That's how we wanna, wanna put all this together. So, really, there's a lot of ways you can mix and match this stuff. Again, a lot of what I do is simply build lots of raw qualified traffic using LinkedIn, and then reuse that traffic from Facebook. Facebook kind of takes over at that point. I do a lot of the conversion stuff, a lot of the, uh, you know, the registrations, the downloads, the lead generation stuff happens in Facebook. And a lot of the sales conversion stuff happens in Facebook as well. So you can build funnels of infinite length based on, did they download this? Okay, drop them in an audience. Did they download that? Okay, keep, keep getting people to go down that funnel and dropping them in based on what they're doing. So, you know, grow that database based on the process you set up in your sales funnel. So the question I always get, I want to touch on it briefly, is what do I budget for this stuff? Um, bottom line, the more you spend, the faster the stuff's gonna go. This really amplifies your inbound process. So if you're doing inbound marketing, you've got, you know, top of the funnel stuff over here, the, you know, meeting new people based on content, getting them over to your website, getting conversions, getting leads, uh, getting them in the sales process, that's your process. But that goes slow sometimes. It takes months and months to really see traction a lot of times when you're doing it organically. If you inject social media advertising into that mix, it's gonna dramatically accelerate that process. It's gonna speed up and, and diminish the time it takes to, to get there. So if you're spending $20 a campaign, $50 a month, 
you can still get some results doing that, but it's still going to be slow going. Uh, we have clients spending you know, a few thousand a month, for example, and that's rapidly speeding up uh, the process for them. They're seeing results a lot faster because they are getting the amplification from the spend on social, and they're getting leads faster, they're getting traffic faster, and it's all just speeding up. So what you budget is up to you, but don't underspend uh, because you're going to get frustrated and say, well, it's still taking too long. Well, yes, if you underspend, it's going to take too long. So base it on you know, your ROI based on what you charge for services and, and cost for acquisition. So I'll wrap up really briefly just with a couple examples. Um, professional services is a great example for this. You can publish a lot of consultative stuff, build those custom audiences, use webinars, things like that, grow that CRM. And then business development has a really nice uh, lead generation system to help them do their job better. Uh, healthcare, we do a lot of work in healthcare. Healthcare is a little bit less like business development oriented, obviously, but you can tie it to email marketing, for example, and build campaigns based on uh, wellness interests and stuff like that. Uh, it works great for nonprofits. I've used this a lot for nonprofits. Uh, they're targeting typically members and donors. So again, the same process applies. Um, event registrations are great for nonprofits as a way you can, can really target and, and drive attendance at events. Uh, consumer, it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to wrap up because I'm running close on time. Uh, software companies, it's a no-brainer. Uh, we do a lot of work in financial services. This is a really good example of form abandonment. Let's say you're applying for a mortgage. Let's say you, you target people based on financial demographics on Facebook, household income, net worth, stuff like that. Get them in front of content, retarget those custom audiences. Let's say they abandon a mortgage application. You can go back and find people that abandon that application based on what they looked at on the page and retarget them and get them to, to reconvert. So uh, that's a great example of how you can do some of the reconversion stuff. So in general, um, just some kind of takeaways for best practices. Don't be afraid to A-B test. Um, I do a lot of variations based on images. You know, use this image over here and image number two over here and see what works best based on your, your lead acquisition rate. Um, and really, it's a long game. It's not a quick, you know, rapid, um, immediately get a bunch of sales. You want to build a system. Just like inbound marketing, it's a system. So again, how can you plug your social advertising program into your inbound marketing system, and that's the approach you want to take. How do I look at this as a long game approach and amplify my whole system to bring leads through faster and faster, but still in a very systematic approach? And I do a lot of timed and evergreen campaigns both. I do a timed campaign sometimes if it's you know, event-based, or an evergreen campaign if we have offers out there that have been running for years, because the offer is timeless, and this download is, is great to, you know, people download all the time, and so we just have this campaign running indefinitely. And so it's great to have an evergreen campaign or two out there or more that just constantly bring more traffic and more leads in. So I'll kind of wrap up there. You can find us on our podcast, as, as I mentioned before, uh, spinnerhome.net slash radio. And I'll kind of wrap up with some, uh, also, this is probably, I promise I'm not selling anything. If you want to uh, spend about 45 minutes with me, I'll get with you one-on-one -on -one and help you walk through this stuff and set up your campaigns uh, directly based on your needs and your specific company. Uh, just go to spinnerhome.net slash social. It'll be up until tomorrow at noon. It'll expire at that point. But go ahead and um, fill out that form, and I'll be happy to set up a time with you to, to go through this stuff. So I'll kind of wrap up and just say, um, don't be afraid to spend money on social. Don't be afraid to integrate this into your inbound marketing program, because this stuff really works for BDC and B2C. It's really, really powerful and will amplify your efforts. Um, so I want you to be sure you take away some stuff that can help you find the right people, uh, target those people effectively, generate the right leads, and I think you're going to have a lot of success if you do this stuff. So thank you. Thank you. I'll stick around afterwards if you have questions as well.